In addition to editing variations, Mutation Surveyor also has many quality metric display options. When looking at the main analysis window for each sample, the lane quality score is displayed on top of each reference and sample electropherogram. This score is a signal to noise ratio of the trace before alignment. It gives an indication of the quality of the data, 0 being the worst and 100 being the best. In addition, Mutation Surveyor can display FRED score for each nucleotide if you want to use it as a quality metric for the data. To display FRED score, go to the process settings and select Display tab. In the Display tab, check FRED score. After hitting OK, FRED score for each nucleotide are displayed in the main analysis window as shown here. The lane score and FRED score can be used to review the overall quality of each sample in the project. This reviewing method allows you to see if the mutation call within a certain sample is reliable based on the overall quality of that sample. To further review the data, you can use the Project Reviewer to view overlapping applicants. The Project Reviewer can be easily selected from the Display tab on the main menu toolbar. This tool offers an alternative view to the main analysis window of the project. It can only be selected after the analysis is completed. The main window of the project reviewer has four different panes. The left pane is the sample pane, which contains all the sample files that were added, similar to the browser pane in the main analysis window. However, the sample pane does not contain contact information. The base pane shows overlapping applicants according to contact. This pane only shows positions that are different between the sample and reference trace. The blank hyphen marks indicate that there are no discrepancy for the nucleotide at those positions. In addition, the base pane also displays the reference sequence and consensus sequence constructed from the overlapping applicants. The trace pane shows the electropherograms of the sample traces. We will discuss how to adjust the pane to display a different electropherogram later on. The mutation table resembles the mutation table in the main analysis window as they display similar information. You can also double click on the mutation and the project reviewer will take you to the sample that contained the mutation, the mutation in the base pane, and the location electropherogram since the whole reviewer is linked. You may also edit your mutation in this table as discussed previously. In the electropherogram pane with the icon shown here in the toolbar, you can select to show sample traces, show mutation traces, or show both. In the first example, only the show sample trace is selected. As you can see here, four sample traces are displayed at once. The variation is highlighted to show the position of the variant. The second example only shows the mutation electropherogram for each sample trace. Again, four electropherograms are shown at once. The variation is indicated with a peak at the position of the detected variant. The default display it should show each sample trace along with its respective mutation electropherogram. Just like the main analysis window, the navigation for each pane uses the same zooming and scrolling method as discussed in the introductory webinar. Another similarity to the main analysis window is that the display for each pane can be chosen by you. First, there is unlink button. This button controls whether the entire viewer is linked. For example, if it is clicked off, you can zoom into the electropherogram without affecting the view of the base pane. The pane display button controls which pane are displayed and which are removed from the project reviewer. In addition, you can also resize any of the pane to the size you want by moving the pane dividers. You can choose specific contact to observe or choose the all option to view all contacts at one time. By choosing to display all, the project reviewer will overlay all samples into a single view relative to the GenBank file. I will now move on to the grouping tool in the Project Reviewer. The Project Reviewer has a useful tool to group samples by either specific characters or from text file. This grouping tool is great for viewing replicate samples. We will first discuss the grouping by specific characters. In the dialog box, I told the software to group my samples by looking at characters 6 to 13. As you can see here, my samples are now grouped into three specific patient ID numbered at character 6 to 13. The other method to group is by using a from file option and then click load sample ID. This option is ideal for sample IDs that have varying length and is not fixed at a specific location in all samples. 
Here, you can either choose to manually type in an identifier to group the samples by, or import a text file that already contains the sample ID. When using the importing option, you can specify more than the allotted 10 sample ID in the dialog box. Here, the grouping of the samples are the same as I inputted the same sample ID that was found between characters 6 to 13. The project reviewer is a useful tool for data analysis and observing the project as a whole. In this window, the samples are grouped by patient ID. The base pane shows overlapping applicants for a single patient. By using the grouping tool, we can identify a discrepancy for a single patient between overlapping applicants. The variant shown here is only in two of the sample file. Looking at the electropharograms for the same position, we see that only two electropharograms have the variant. There seems to be a spacing issue in these two traces while the rest of the overlapping trace does not contain the same variant. From this thought, this mutation is probably not real and the software also recognizes this and automatically deletes it, as common in the mutation table. This function can also be used to confirm variants. If a variant appears in all replica samples, it is most likely a real mutation. Another alternative view to the main analysis window is the graphic display report. It can be used to review sample alignment and mutation calls for contact. The report can be opened from the display tab on the main menu toolbar or selecting the graphic display button on the main analysis display window. A dialog box will appear with a few display options to choose. The first two options involve actual mutation display. Display only mutation with two directional calls will give the results more confidence than mutation that is called only in one direction. The last three options pertain to specific mutation such as synonymous, stop or endo, and confirm mutation only. Clicking OK after selecting the appropriate settings will bring up the analysis window for the graphic display report. The first pane contains a color coding legend that explains which color indicates the ROI, CDS, and different type of variation. The second pane is a GenBank pane which displays information about the loaded GenBank file. The color tick marks indicate reported variation and each color corresponds to the variation indicated in the color coding legend. The third pane is a reference pane displaying information about the reference trace that was used for the selected contact. The sample pane contains all the samples within the selected contact. The tick marks shown in the sample pane indicate variant positions that were detected in those samples. The same tick mark is used in the project display report which we will discuss later. The allele frequency pane shows the percentage of samples in the contact with mutation at the indicated position. The average mutation score pane shows the average mutation score for all the calls at that position. The allele frequency and mutation score pane should have peaks at position that correlates with the tick marks in the sample pane. You can choose which contact is displayed by using the drop down menu in the toolbar. The entire report is interactive and navigation uses the same method as the main analysis window. This report can be printed by using the print icon on the toolbar. The next thing we will talk about is the project display report option within the graphic display report that can show all the samples, reference, and context in one window. However, unlike the project reviewer, it does not have an overlaying view of all the applicants. It can be accessed through the project display report button which will bring up a dialog box settings. Reject 1D calls when other direction has no call is set as default because if a mutation is called in both directions, it is more likely to be true than if it is only called in one direction. After selecting the desired settings, click OK and the project display report will populate. This report is interactive and as you can see, it displays both forward and reverse samples, reference and genpack information, allele frequency, and average mutation score for the entire project. This report can be printed or exported as a text, Excel, or XML file after reviewing the data. Next, we will talk about the different grouping options in the project display report and how it can give you a different graphical view of the samples in your project. The file name match will group the sample files by specific characters, resembling the grouping tool in a project reviewer. Select OK and the project display report will generate. In this window, the project display report automatically groups all samples into three specific ID as specified. 
This view shows samples from three different patients aligning to a single contact. As you can see, the sample pane shows where on the contact each sample file aligned to for three separate patients. You can print this report by using the print icon located in the toolbar. The second grouping option is to group all samples by text input. If you load a grouping file in the Open Files dialog box, this option will group all samples files accordingly. If you did not load a grouping file, this option will group the samples by their respective forward and reverse pair. With this option selected, the report will look like this. You can observe in this window that each pair of forward and reverse sample are aligned to their respective positions. In this view, you can see where each sample file overlap each other. You can print the report by using the print icon. In addition to the project reviewer, you can also use the custom report as a means to check for discrepancy in your data. It can be accessed from the report tab on the main menu toolbar. The settings dialog box will appear. First, we want to generate a group consensus for each patient relative to the variations. Then, under the grouping header, from the drop-down menu of the first order, select sample ID. Then, specify the characters you want to group by. In this example, I am using the same characters I used earlier to group the three patients. Click OK and the report will generate. The report will generate with a header. In Mutation Surveyor, you can create your own header in the custom report. If you would like more information, please refer to the custom report options webinar. In this table, you can see that there are a total of three consensus groups for the three individual patients grouped by their patient IDs. All basic information, such as start and end position, size, quality, and other data are displayed in this region. Any variations with a yellow background indicate discrepancy. As the mutation is only present in some samples and not all, and suggests that you review the variation manually. By double-clicking on the mutation, you will be taken to the mutation position in the main analysis window for review. If you lose the mutation table while reviewing the data, hold Control and press T to bring the table back up and review other discrepancy if needed. By default, purple background indicate reported variance, blue text in the report indicate high confidence, while red text indicate low confidence mutation calls. The color coding and the custom report are all customizable and can be changed in the settings. Please refer to the custom report options webinar for more information. The final part of the webinar will touch on the project file extraction tool or extract SGP as it is called in Mutation Surveyor. Mutation Surveyor keeps two copies of the GenBank, one original used for the analysis and an edited one that contained additional custom tags that was added by you. The SGP extraction can be accessed from the Tools tab on the main menu, which is basically a tool to extract components from a saved project file. You must choose the project file in the input field, choose the desired component to be extracted, and specify an output directory. The dialog box has option to extract the original GenBank file, the edited GenBank file, or both. These components can be saved for future references. To sum up the webinar, we quickly went over how to import data and run the analysis. After the analysis, we discussed the color coding scheme and how to manually edit the mutation if needed. Then, the project reviewer was used to assemble overlapping applicants in one window. The grouping tool within the project reviewer allows you to group replicate samples by specific characters or sample ID. The second data analysis method discussed was the graphic display report, which shows alignment and mutation calls for specific contexts in the project. The project display report showed all the separate contexts in one window. And finally, we talked about the project file extraction tool, which is used to export specific components from a single project file. This concludes Soft Genetics webinar on reviewing and editing data with mutation survey software. If you would like more information or want to try a free 30-day trial, please visit www.softgenetics.com or send an email to info at softgenetics.com. You may also request for online training if you are interested in learning more about the software and its capabilities. Thank you for joining me in this webinar.